Hey there, movie enthusiasts. Today, let's dive into the classic 1950 film Harvey. This charming flick follows Elwood P. Dowd, a genial man whose best friend happens to be an invisible six-foot-three-inch rabbit. Sounds crazy, right? Well, buckle up because there are plenty of funny, shocking, and even a tad bit sad facts about this film that you wouldn't want to miss. So keep those eyes glued to the screen. Ever wondered how a giant invisible bunny could impact someone's life? Well, we want to hear your personal stories. Has the movie left you with a belly full of laughter or perhaps a tear in your eye? Share your tales in the comments below. Now, back to the film. Elwood's unconventional friendship with his invisible companion leads to a series of hilarious escapades and heartwarming moments. But here's the catch, there's more to this classic than meets the eye. The narrative weaves through layers of comedy, surprising twists, and a touch of melancholy, making it a delightful ride from start to finish. Before we wrap up, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Harvey? Drop your stories and memories in the comments. We can't wait to read them. Stay tuned for more intriguing insights into the world of this timeless classic. And remember, the best stories are the ones shared. So, spill the beans on your Harvey adventures below. Harvey stands as a classic film praised for its impeccable execution in various aspects. The foundation of its success lies in a compelling script that seamlessly blends inventiveness, charm, and warmth without succumbing to sentimentality. The stellar cast, led by Jimmy Stewart in the role of Elwood P. Dowd, contributes significantly to the film's magic. His nuanced performance breathes life into the character, allowing the audience to hear the true happiness Elwood has discovered in life. The director skillfully weaves together the elements of the script and the actors' performances, creating a rare and extraordinary cinematic experience. The movie navigates through the narrative with grace, avoiding the pitfalls that could have made it maudlin. It's a testament to the cinematic craft that comes together when a superb script, talented actors, and a capable director converge. The film, however, may not resonate with everyone as some find fault in the portrayal of certain characters and their actions. While Elwood and the charming Miss Kelly draw viewers in, others in the ensemble can be perceived as unlikable with their overreactions and questionable behavior. The initial moments of the film may even prove to be somewhat off-putting for some, contributing to a mixed viewing experience. Despite these criticisms, the movie introduces an interesting twist that leads to a conclusion that resonates with many. The notion that embracing the eccentricity of someone kind may be preferable to the misery of conformity strikes a chord with a wide audience. It requires the audience to endure the unlikable traits of certain characters before reaching this poignant realization. In terms of humor, opinions vary. Some find the interruptions and distractions during Elwood's attempts to introduce Harvey amusing, while others may not see the comedic element in those moments. The comedic value seems to hinge on the viewer's perspective and sense of humor. In summary, the classic successfully brings together the essential elements of a great movie. Despite its quirks and the mixed reactions to certain characters, it remains an extraordinary piece of cinema, leaving a lasting impression on those who appreciate its unique blend of charm, warmth, and unconventional wisdom. Before hitting the silver screen, there were intriguing plans for a surprise cameo in the film. A press release hinted at Francis, the talking mule, making an appearance. In this envisaged moment, Elwood P. Dowd, portrayed by James Stewart, was set to stroll past Francis. Unexpectedly, Francis would speak, prompting Elwood to turn in response. However, Francis would redirect him, claiming to be engaged in conversation with a large rabbit. Fast forward to 1990, and James Stewart's involvement extended beyond acting. He recorded an introduction for the VHS release, contributing to the film's substantial success in video sales that year. Notably, the U.S. premiere lacked the presence of director Henry Coster, occupied with his next project in London. Despite the distance, Coster, alongside James Stewart and Marlene Dietrich, experienced the film in a London Universal Office's projection room. A unique blend of planned surprises and unforeseen circumstances added layers to the narrative behind the scenes, enriching the history of this cinematic gem. Before bringing Harvey to the silver screen, James Stewart had previously portrayed Elwood P. Dowd on stage during the absence of the role's originator, Frank Fay. The collaboration between Stewart and director Henry Coster proved highly successful, with Coster describing it as one of the most pleasant experiences in his career. 
The seamless teamwork was marked by professionalism, ambition, and precision, with Stewart's exceptional talent adding a touch of excellence to the process. Notably, Josephine Hall, who played a role in the Broadway version of Harvey, reprised her character in the film. Jesse White, another original Broadway cast member, appeared in various renditions, including a 1972 television version and stage performances in both the USA and London during the 1970s. The synergy among the cast and crew, highlighted by Stewart's stage experience, Coster's adept direction, and the reprisal of roles by key Broadway performers contributed to the film's success. Such collaborative efforts, paired with unexpected behind-the-scenes twists, added depth to the narrative, enriching the history of this cinematic gem. In conversation with Mrs. Chumley, Elwood describes Harvey as a puka, a creature from Irish, Celtic, and Nordic mythology. The puka, a harbinger of either favorable or unfavorable news, can assume various animal or human forms. Typically, it is amiable and highly helpful. Throughout the film, Elwood P. Dowd, portrayed by James Stewart, is depicted as an alcoholic, but a solitary instance shows him consuming a drink. This restriction results from the Hollywood production code of the time, prohibiting the portrayal of him getting drunk on screen. The film secured the seventh spot on the American Film Institute's list of the top 10 fantasy films in June 2008. This recognition highlights the enduring appeal of Harvey within the fantasy genre, in summary, Harvey delves into the mythical realm of the puka, portrays Elwood's character with adherence to production codes, and attains recognition as a notable fantasy film by the American Film Institute. A unique blend of mythology, adherence to industry standards, and critical acclaim contributes to the film's lasting significance in the genre. The play Harvey by Mary Chase debuted on Broadway in 1944, running for an impressive 1775 performances and earning the Pulitzer Prize in Drama in 1945. Mary Chase and producer Brock Pemberton had a lucrative deal, set to receive $100,000 per year for a decade plus a share in the film's profits. However, Pemberton's death in March 1950 delayed the film's production, honoring the contractual agreement. On set, the cast and crew playfully included an empty chair for the titular character during lunch, humorously ordering food for the unseen character. This anecdote adds a touch of camaraderie to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. It reflects the light-hearted atmosphere amidst the serious business of bringing Harvey to the screen. In summary, the journey from Broadway to the silver screen for Harvey involved a successful theatrical run a unique contractual arrangement, and a light-hearted set tradition, all contributing to the film's history. In a deal valued at $750,000, Universal International secured the film rights for Harvey. James Stewart later acknowledged Josephine Hall's challenging role, requiring a nuanced portrayal of belief and disbelief in the invisible rabbit. The movie weaves in Celtic folklore, exploring the puka as a shape-shifting creature with the ability to bring both good and bad fortune. This amalgamation of financial investment, character complexity, and folklore elements enriches the narrative depth. The convergence of these elements adds to the overall richness of the film. Two decades after its cinematic debut, James Stewart reprised his role as Elwood P. Dowd in a triumphant Broadway revival of the film's narrative in 1970. Joining him was Helen Hayes, portraying his sister. The successful Broadway run led to a hallmark Hall of Fame television production in 1972, with Stewart and Hayes once again embodying their characters. Stewart's final reprisal of the role occurred in a 1975 London stage revival. Notably, new portraits of Elwood and Harvey were commissioned to reflect Stewart's age. A noteworthy aspect of the film was its significance as Fess Parker's inaugural project in the world of cinema. James Stewart's influence also shaped the director's vision, prompting adjustments to widen shots, ensuring the titular character, Harvey, remained prominently in the frame. 